A new season looms at FC Vaduz? Let's get straight into it. And we start with transfer news. As expected, at the end of last season, Slavko Jovanovic left the club, Nottingham Forest activating his release clause. Perhaps a surprise departure next as Harrison Murray Campbell is gone after just one year at the club. He said he couldn't handle the competition for places, so we cut him loose. Also leaving after a season away on loan last time was Cameron Congreve, who joins Preston. And also leaving us for the championship, a player we at one time had high hopes for but never developed, Martin Kuchta. With the FC Vaduz Youth Academy producing some real talents in the last few years, I did not really see the need to bring anybody in until I got an agent offer that almost no football manager player could ever resist. A Serbian wonder kid, Modrad Radic. Sure, he may look like he fell asleep poolside with his goggles still on over the summer, but he's a clinical finisher with a great touch and lightning pace. The only downside is that he is apparently injury prone, but with a bit of squad rotation, I'm sure we can manage that. What? Okay, I see what you mean as he promptly pulled a calf muscle in his preseason debut. But never mind, as Jordan Keeling was in fine goal-scoring form as our new Serbian striker missed the first two games of the season. But Radic was fit for his competitive debut by mid-August as we took on Arau, and after Jankowicz had given us the lead, he got injured again. But at least we went on to win that game 3-2, and if you've been paying attention, you'll realise that was three wins out of three to kick off the season. So despite a little bit of bad luck with injuries, have we finally broken out of that bad habit of making slow starts to the season? Um, well, maybe not. I really don't know what to say about this embarrassment at the hands of Basil. You know what? Let's focus on European competition instead. With no coefficient backdoor entry to the Champions League this season, we were back to the Europa League. With a set of fixtures that I felt gave us a decent shot at another top 8 finish, our first opponent Spurs seemed to be writing us off. We showed them what we were about though in that match that brought us Radic's first goal for the club and the first time he started and finished a match for us. Despite conceding a late equaliser, we were more than happy with the point. Though not so happy with the next point against Rapid Vienna. We had beaten our cross-border rivals comfortably three times before in European competition, so this time having to scrape a late draw definitely felt like a setback. It took a high-scoring encounter with Shamrock Rovers to put our first win on the board. Youngster Hans Brahma impressing as he scored a first-half brace. And then our match of the season so far as we travel to Borussia Park to take on Mönchengladbach, sealing an emphatic win as Kaigen's opener was followed by a brace from English winger Jordan Keeling, the night topped off by a Dembele on goal. What a result. We had another crazy away trip as we took on Lyon in our next game. Four goals in the opening 10 minutes. Saw us fall 3-1 behind and in need of a huge comeback miracle to get anything from the game. Challenge accepted. And accepted by Bradley Fink, who completed his hat-trick to level the scores at 3-3 before we got the dreaded stoppage time highlight. But it proved to be Leon who would suffer as Fink grabbed his fourth of the night with a match-winning goal, moving us up to 10th in the table. Whew, I think I need a break after that one, which we'll do by heading back the Super League. We bounced back from that humiliation at Basel with a 3-1 win away to Zurich and then picked up our fourth 1-0 win in a row over Young Boys. Youth product Andreas Corner getting the game's only goal. Those wins kicked off an unbeaten run that went right up to the winter break with us only conceding five goals in 13 games in the process. Which is as many as we conceded in that one game with Basel, so I think we can confidently chalk that one down as a freak result. And although we could not keep our winning run against young boys going, we were now sitting pretty in second place. Once the winter break was over, our run continued with four wins out of five, no goals conceded, meaning we finished the regular season within a point of young boys and on an 18-game domestic unbeaten run. Now we'll catch up on the January transfers and the championship group next time, but now we cycle back to the Europa League. We followed that thrilling win over Lyon with a drab 0-0 at Club Brugge. A 4-1 win over Joe Gardens put us in firm contention for a top 8 place, and we would need a win in our final league phase match with Olympiacos to make that happen. After Thomas Murrow had opened the scoring, Pascal Olner extended the lead, and our nifty English winger Jordan Keeling made sure of the victory in the second half. 3-0 the scoreline, and that was a scoreline which was quite commonplace for us 
in early 2031. That win secured us 6th place in the table, one of only 4 unbeaten teams. There were no major shocks in the playout round, though it was great to see big European knights return to Aberdeen. So who will we play in the round of 16? Once again, Borussia Mönchengladbach. Find out if we can repeat that 4-0 scoreline over them in the end of season episode. Next time though, we're going to catch up on international action with the Liechtenstein national team.